Hello everybody and welcome. This is History Dude and today we will be continuing our series of the history of battle with the Siege of Sardis which occurred in 546 BCE. Now in 550 BCE the Persian ruler Cyrus the Great, this man right here, established a power base that would grow into an empire when he took control of the kingdom of Media in ancient Iran. Now Cyrus, the founder of the Persian Achaemenid or Achaemenid, whichever one you want to call it, empire, began his remarkable career of conquest by taking over the kingdom of the Medes from its ruler, Astyages. By 546 BCE, when he defeated Croesus of Lydia, Cyrus controlled western Iran, northern Mesopotamia, and most of Anatolia. His capture of Babylon and subsequent campaigns extended Persian rule over a vast area from the Mediterranean to the borders of India. Cyrus's military successes resulted from an unmatched ability to organize and supply large-scale forces drawn from all parts of his empire. In addition, he won the support of many of his conquered peoples with a policy of religious tolerance. Now, when he took over the kingdom of Media, this takeover led to a conflict with neighboring Lydia, a major power in western Anatolia. And after an indecisive battle at Teria in 547, Cyrus invaded Lydia and advanced on its capital, Sardis. The Lydian ruler, Croesus, confronted the Persian with a large army formed with the help of his Egyptian, Babylonian, and Spartan allies. Outnumbered, Cyrus formed his forces into a defensive square with his baggage camels in front and his archers in the middle. And this is just an uh, idea to give you... Well, this map is six years after the Battle of Lydia. That's why you can see Sardis is already under the control of the Persian Empire. But this is where Sardis is located in Lydia. And interesting story about uh, this battle. Um, King Croesus, um, he, you may know him from the legend as to be rich as Croesus. He was known as a man of great wealth. He went to the oracle at Delphi, and he asked if he would win um, the victory against the Persians. And he was told, a great empire shall be destroyed. And satisfied with this answer, he went back, and he fought this battle, the Battle of Sardis. But the smell of the Persian camels disturbed the Lydian horses and disrupted their charge while high trajectory fire from the Persian bowmen inside the square caused the Lydians and their allies to flow around it in some disorder. The Persians counterattacked and it swiftly turned into a rout and Sardis fell soon afterward. And there's varying um, accounts of what happened to Croesus. Some say he was burned at the stake. Others say that he was about to be burned but Cyrus pardoned him at the last minute. But what is known is that the great kingdom that Cyrus, uh, or the great kingdom that Croesus heard was going to be conquered, turned out to be his own. And here you can see the remains of Sardis as it stands today. There's not much left of it, but you can see some foundations and some columns can get an idea of how magnificent of a city it must have been in those times. And finally, this is an image of the Persian Immortals. Now, these were an elite guard of the Persian Empire. Now, if one died, he was immediately replaced, hence the name. So, there were always, they always had a set number of men. And they always replaced their immortals so they always had the same amount of men in the unit hence the name now the battle of sardis it occurred on the plain of thimbra outside sardis in anatolia the persians had about fifty thousand men and the lydian alliance we have no idea uh, how many men they had but we know it was greater than fifty thousand and as for casualties we have no reliable estimates but all we know is that Cyrus the Great was the victor and the kingdom of Lydia fell 
into his hands and he became much more powerful and he continued his Persian conquests. And that is it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and as always, remember to have an awesome day.